In this video, we are looking at a design pattern called visitor. This is a very powerful pattern and it can be used to introduce new functionality to a hierarchy of classes even after the system has been fully implemented and we don't have to go into the system to make this modification. It is not applicable to all parts of an object oriented system, but it can be used to add functionality on a hierarchy of classes. Let's assume that we want to introduce a new functionality for book objects on our first implementation of the library system. So let's say that we want to print the books in a certain format. So we have the library system and we, want, we never thought of uh, printing the books and let's say that uh, we want to add that functionality. So we have an interface that specifies that books should be printed in a certain format. So it is a very simple interface. It says have a method called print and given a book, it will print the book. The format can be specified by the implementer of this interface. So I can have multiple classes that implement book format. So I have public a book format implements book format and it obviously has to have that implementation of the print method given a book it will print the book in a certain way so it may be one way might be to print it in large print so that people with uh, reading issues could have an easier time reading the book or it could be printed in a certain font or whatever, whatever your book format. You can have many different implementations of the interface. And how would you print all the books? Well, you can create an instance of uh, this object and supply it to a method called book report, which can iterate through the catalog, pull out each book and supply that book to the book format object. So format is of type book format and it has the print method. So we call the print method and everything is done. Well, um, what is uh, the drawback of such an approach? Well, we definitely can do this, but this only applies for one application. And we only have one class here. If you had a hierarchy of classes, what would you do? You will have to have a switch statement. You will have to check the type of the parameter and then see what you need to do, periodicals or books or CDs, whatever. I mean, CDs, of course, you may not print, you may just print the title of the CD. In any case, you will have to look at the type of the object and switch on that. That is not a very object oriented approach. The visitor pattern takes care of adding new functionality to a hierarchy of classes. And how does it do that? What you do is at the time of constructing the system, you put in a few methods in a few places. And after that, you have the plumbing needed to take care of any new functionality on the hierarchy. That is the idea. So as you are constructing the system, you must put in the necessary methods and interfaces. And after the system has been implemented, all you need to do is 
create classes outside of the system and like magic, the new functionality will be incorporated into the system on the hierarchy that you have in mind, that you have taken care of. So what does the visitor pattern involve? It involves an interface called the visitor interface. And let's assume that we have the enhanced version of the library with a loanable item at the, as a super class and a hierarchy of classes like book, periodical, CD, DVD, et cetera, et cetera, extending loanable item. So the typical naming pattern for the visitor interface would be the name of the super class, loanable item in this case, followed by the word visitor. So loanable item visitors. So you have to have a interface that is called the visitor interface. Then we put in one method in each of the classes in the hierarchy. And we generally call that method accept. And it would look like this public void accept and it will have one parameter of this interface type. Then in the implementation of the visitor pattern, as you are implementing more and more functionalities, you will implement more and more classes. So you will have as many classes that implement the visitor interface as there are functionalities. So suppose uh, you finish your library system implementation on a certain day and next day you think, okay, I need a new, a new functionality. What you would do is then create a class that implements the visitor interface and that will be automatically incorporated in, into the system and it will work. And if you, day after tomorrow, you create a, a second class that implements the visitor interface to take care of yet another new functionality. So all these concrete classes would implement the loanable item visitor interface. So what do they look like? This is the interface, public interface, loanable item visitor. It contains a number of methods typically called visit. And they have parameters that are obviously different. They have all have just one parameter. The first visit method here has the parameter of the superclass. This one, the second one has the parameter for one of the subclasses, which is book. Then I have a visit method for the other subclass periodical. And if I had CDs and DVDs, et cetera, et cetera, I would add visit methods for all of them. So as I am implementing my library system, I will add this interface to my implementation. Just put in this interface as part of the implementation. You don't have to implement any classes at that point, or you could implement that too. But, uh, and now you look at, at that point, you should look at what all um, classes are there in that hierarchy. If you have seven subclasses and loanable item, you should have eight visit methods. Right now I have put in only for two subclasses of loanable item. So that is the first thing that you do. The second thing that you do is put in every class in the hierarchy, this method, public 
void except learnable item visitor 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 dot visit this this you put in every class in the super class and in every subclass of the hierarchy that is what you need to do at the time of implementing the system the original system and then what do you do when you suppose you want to print the books in a certain format the books and the periodicals in a certain format this is what you do you implement the loanable item visitor which means implementing the visit method for each type of each type that is in the hierarchy so i call this class item format implements loanable item visitor i have a method for the book object periodical objects and loanable item objects and the signatures are public void visit right you can look at the interface public void visit right so i'm implementing all these methods and here i am writing the code to print each type of object and if i get something that is not really a type that i am prepared for i will say i don't know how to print it that is this catch all stuff and one other thing that you can have to make this quite um, a pleasant experience to reduce the pain is to have a method like this in the library class public void process items it takes a visitor and it goes through every object in the catalog so i am getting a iterator to the loanable items and i pull out each loanable item and i call the accept method so what happens when you call the accept method look at this i am item is an object in catalog so it could be a periodical it could be a book and i am calling the accept method and i am given a visitor so it is a visitor that does something on the hierarchy so i am calling the accept method and let's see what the accept method um, does on this the accept method given a visitor would call the visit method with itself as the parameter so it whatever is the visitor it calls the visit method and what happens there if it is the book object it will end up going here and that book will be printed if it was a periodical of the rudo called this method and it would print the periodical and that is it and if you put this method in the library this can be called from the user interface to cater to any loanable item visitor 